And I think that they were continuing the individuation process that she began with her vision journals, with her work with Carl Jung, and that she was taking that individuation process further, just herself into the relationship with her and Harry. And the two of them were doing the work together. Between the two wars, between World War I and World War II, there was just this incredible disillusionment, you know, that people had lost such faith in so much. And so I think they were, she was a very idealistic person and I think they were searching to create this, this myth and this new religion. I'm intrigued by her notion of uh, the dyad uh, that she and Harry were lovers for 40 years and tried to continue Jung's work of individuation and extend it into an interpersonal relationship and maybe a human embodiment of what the union of opposites could look like. Um, mm -hmm. Can you say more about what you think and understand about uh, her passion for that? Well, I think I'm still um, trying to figure all of it out. I've been working my way through uh, thousands of pages of her journals, her writings. They were writing a book about it. Um, and just recently, I found more under Harry's archives at Harvard. There are four different archives of Christiana's papers at, at the Harvard archives, including her vision journals. Um, so there's a lot to sort through. Um, so I don't fully understand it, but I think that they were, you know, continuing the individuation process that she began with her vision journals, uh, with her work with Carl Jung, and that she was taking that individuation process further as just herself into the relationship with her and Harry. Um, and the two of them were doing the work together. Um, it, they believed, you know, af between the two wars, between World War I and World War II, there was just this incredible um, change in, in disillusionment, you know, that people had lost such faith in so much that politics, religion, you know, it was the time mm -hmm. Nietzsche's God is dead. Um, and so I think they were, she was a very idealistic person. And I think they were searching to create this, this myth and this new religion. Um, right. So. Right. Which I, I really felt that Hillary during the film when you spent all that time lovingly focusing on the stained glass. Mm. It really, mm. really hit me, you know, that, that she was really trying to live out uh, this. Uh, she was really trying to live out the symbolic life. She was really committed to that. And, and she wanted to um, sort of actualize it to the fullest extent possible. I mean, interestingly, I, I, f I find, you know, having, having uh, you know, read her, her biography, uh, you know, in preparation for this, by the way, uh, her biography is uh, Translate This Darkness, written by Claire Douglas, a Jungian analyst, and we'll put that in the show notes too. But, you know, it's because one of the things, you know, on the one hand, she was so unconventional and she was trying to live out this symbolic life. And on the other hand, she was told by Jung and others that her role was to be the femme inspiratrice, to be kind of an adjunct to the man, you know, or the soror mystica. Um, so, so somehow um, those two things feel to me uh, like there's a tension there, that, that, that she could make a commitment to living out the symbolic life, and yet somehow it necessitated him. You know, it necessitated Harry Murray. I don't know if others would agree with me that there's a tension there, but I think I, that was rattling around my head as I was reading, and I'm, I think I'm still trying to to work that out because it 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 feels like um, on the one hand she was very committed to her own bringing forth what was in her, and and on the other hand it feels like she was often doing so in service to him or or another man like Jung. Yeah, I think um, so much of the readings that I've been done, her personal readings, have been shifting my perspective a little bit because um, I think that when she came, 
when she was working with Jung, he was incredibly inspired by what she was creating. And he was very, very supportive of her, her work. Um, and then when she came back from Munich, having at that point um, consummated her relationship with Harry um, and returned to Jung, um, this was during her analysis, for some reason, the analysis began to change. Um, some people have surmised, some Jungians have surmised that perhaps all of these incredibly powerful female archetypes that were coming up were more than Jung could kind of deal with. Um, there was talk in Claire's book of Jung being jealous of this new relationship that Harry and Christiana were beginning. There was, um, she even intimated that Jung may have had an affair with her at one point, right? Right, which I have speculation. It's speculation. I have a hard time with it because she was just falling in love with Harry Murray at that point, and I, I, I find it a little strange that, especially a woman just in that new phase of a newfound, you know, that infatuation phase and being so uh, deeply um, distracted would also, but. One is not to know until we get more of the papers between Young and Christiana, I think. Um, But I think that um, as the therapy continued with Young, and it was towards the end, Young began to become less supportive and more disparaging of her and more. um, And he also began to say to her, uh, you know, maybe it's time to have another child. And what I really think now is that you should get behind in creating Harry, that his success is going to, you know, be dependent. Um, and also very much supportive of a triangle. He had the triangle with Tony Wolf, and he had the triangle with his wife, Emma. And so when both Harry and Christiana came to him at different times, conflicted about this new, you know, growing affair between the three of them, he, of course, was very supportive of it. Um, so I, I think that um, I feel as if Christiana was not subordinate to Jung. I don't think she was subordinate to Harry um, and the men in her life. I think she was very supportive of the men in her life. Um, and Claire really makes a lot of her um, argument in the book is about how Christiana was subordinate to the men. And and I think that when you look at it at this point, it, it appears that way because Christiana's name is on none of the work at Harvard. No one knows about the tower. No one knows about her artwork. She she seems like this figure, the veiled woman in the inner circle of Carl Jung's world, which is the subtitle of her book as well. Um, there's, you know, in the correspondence with Jung, Christiana does push back. Jung says to her, you know, you're scolding me and you're right to be scolding me. Um, You know, they made up years later, but I think she was very somewhat defiant with his, you know, with his change of heart towards her. I Um, think she, I imagine she felt pretty hurt, you know, that would be. Yeah. And and I think the strongest point I want to make here is that I think that um, Christiana had, from my understanding with the readings I've done, Christiana and Harry had this agreement that she was to help him with the Harvard Psychological Clinic. She helped him co-direct it. She helped as a researcher. Um, She had patients. um, And they published um, three different publications together. And um, the most notable being the TAT. Um, And he, his part of the bargain was to help her with a tower and to continue their individuation process as a couple at the tower. Um, and so, you know, this, this, this was what the agreement was. And in the end, tragically, Harry could not really come through with his part of the bargain. He was a very gregarious, charismatic fellow, but he was um, very drawn to his work at Harvard and the very sort of active social life he had, both with his family and professionally. And it was really hard for him to give that up and devote as much time as was needed to Christiana and the Tower. 
And I think that's what made the relationship um, uh, fall away and, you know, it became very sad for her. I'm curious a little bit about your sense of Christiana's experience in herself of her collaborations. Because I think it's easy to sit here in 2024 and fantasize a certain kind of political frame on the outcomes of her life. And, and from this perspective, imagine, well, if I were in that situation, you know, I'd feel outraged or I'd feel these different qualities. But I wonder if you have a sense of what it was like for her to collaborate with um, her lover, but also with Jung relative to the seminars. Did she experience herself being exploited? Um, you know, I haven't gotten through her analysis notes. These are these are some of the real treasures that still exist that are at Harvard. She she took extensive notes after her therapy and her reactions to that. Um, but from her other journals and things that I've wrote that I've that I've written, um, I th- I think there was some real frustration with her because she really was beginning to tap into these. In the, the animus figures and these incredibly powerful uh, archetypes that were giving her new strength and new independence, and you know, quite frankly, what she what she suffered from as a young child was depressions, which were largely brought on because she was being repressed. That the the society was so repressive towards women, um, not being able to use you know, go off to college and use their minds and, and join the workforce. And she was very much a precocious, very intelligent, strong-willed child who actually was put in a closet by her, by her mother, who, who found it really at times very hard to, to deal with this child. Um, and um, when she became really depressed as a teenager, um, at that time, the doctor's would prescribe bed rest. They would recommend taking books away and not socializing, you know, taking, taking away stimulation, which was the worst thing for her possible. You know, she really wanted to get out and experience the world and read great books, uh, you know, learn more ideas and, and really just open her horizons and to work. I mean, she, you know, escaped to New York from her parents' home. Uh, to, during the war, um, to become to to learn be become a nurse. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, th- I think I think there's you know there's a lot there. Mm-hmm. 